Hi, I'm Adam Pritchard, Assistant Curator of Paleontology for the Virginia Museum of Natural History, and I'm back with another tale of ancient life. This week at the VMNH, we are celebrating the 2020 Reptile Festival, which is admittedly quite different from our prior festivals. Most of the educational content for Reptile Festival this year is going to be online on the VMNH social media pages posted Friday and Saturday, including this video. For those more locally in Martinsville, we are setting up tables outside the museum on Saturday to show off some of our reptilian specimens for a small drive-through experience. For Reptile Festival, I thought it would be good to talk about something that makes a certain group of reptiles unique and has helped them succeed on Earth for over 200 million years. It's that classic reptilian innovation, the turtle's shell. Now, when I was a kid, I remember teachers, books, all kinds of sources telling me that turtles carry around their house on their back, in reference to the shell. This is a perspective that's entered pop culture, such as this scene from 1941's Tortoise Beats Hair, in which Bugs Bunny rips a turtle's shell off and reveals its underpants. It almost makes turtles out to be like hermit crabs that hop out of their shells whenever they feel like it. But it's a little more complicated than that. Once you learn about the anatomy of a turtle shell, it gets a whole lot cooler and weirder. Now a turtle shell is made up of two primary components, a lower plastron and an upper carapace. The lower part of the plastron is usually quite a bit flatter than the domed carapace. It's made up of many individual bony plates and they're derived from the same bones that make up the chest skeleton of other reptiles, like lizards and crocodilians. The carapace, too, is made up of lots of individual bony plates. But is the carapace made up of individual armor plates from the skin of the turtle, or is it something else? Well, if we flip this carapace over so you're looking at the underside, you can see that it is actually containing vertebrae, 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 and then sticking out of the side of those and extending right into the shell, the ribs. The turtle's carapace is mostly made up of the same skeleton parts that make up your rib cage. The vertebrae and the ribs jammed together into this solid plate. So a turtle isn't just carrying a house around on its back. It's not a separate piece. Basically, when a turtle draws its arms and its legs into this, it's pulling them into its own chest. It just blows my mind to think that a turtle's skeleton is so incredibly modified from the original reptile condition. Biologists and paleontologists have been asking for a long time how exactly the turtle's shell came about. It's such an incredible innovation. If we look at the fossil record, turtles with complete shells have been on Earth for over 200 million years. The oldest fossil turtle for a long time was an animal called Proganochiles from the Triassic period of Germany. A decent sized animal over two feet long with lots of little armor spikes on its neck and tail, Proganochiles had a pretty modern looking turtle shell with a domed carapace on top and a flat plastron on the bottom. In addition to that, Proganochiles didn't have any teeth in its jaws and had a relatively short stubby snout and a really solidly built skull. So the oldest turtle in the fossil record, over 200 million years old, already had a lot of the key parts of turtle anatomy in place. A big gap still existed between a presumably shellless ancient reptile and a fully shelled Proganochiles. In 2008, Chinese paleontologist Li Chun and a team of collaborators described Odontochiles, a very surprising turtle that was older than Proganochiles. It came from ocean deposits from the Triassic period of China, over 230 million years old. Odontochiles had a really solidly built skull like a modern turtle, but it had little cone-shaped teeth all along its jaws. And in addition to that, it didn't have a carapace. It only had the flat lower part of the shell fused together, the plastron. Instead of a carapace, it had widened ribs, kind of big flat structures, but they weren't fused together to make up a shell. It was essentially a turtle in a half shell. I feel like there's a pop culture reference there. Nah. So with the discovery of Odontochiles, scientists now had this weird model where the turtle shell evolved in two big parts rather than all as one piece. The plastron first, and the carapace, apparently, later in time. What good is half a shell? Well, if Odontochiles is dealing with predators from below, it might be all it needed. Alternatively, the plastron may have helped as ballast, allowing the animal to swim stably in the water. 
Between 2010 and 2018, scientists reported a number of additional fossils that helped flesh out the turtle story even more. Teams working in South Africa reported on fossils of an animal called Eunotosaurus, which didn't have a plastron, but did have the broad, flattened ribs, suggesting the earliest stages of the turtle carapace. Meanwhile, a team working in Germany discovered Popochiles, an animal with teeth in its jaws, very loosely built skull, those big, broad, flat ribs, and slightly enlarged chest bones. Didn't have any of the pieces of the shell fused together, but all of the elements were sort of in place for the complete shell that would occur later in time. So, it's almost like this sort of straight line evolutionary trajectory. We start with small animals that have broadened structures, the ribs and in the chest, then an odontochiles, a slightly larger animal with a complete plastron but no carapace, and finally, in Proganochiles and all later turtles, a complete shell made up of both components. But a new fossil confused the picture even more, because it turns out it wasn't just small animals that had these broadened ribs and incomplete shell. Eorhynchochiles, a species after the time of Odontochiles from the Triassic period of China, has the broadened ribs, but absolutely no components of the shell. But it's over seven feet long and has a mouthful of sharp teeth and a tiny little beak. So these ancient turtles, even without their shells, were able to occupy lots of different environments and achieve very different sizes during the Triassic period. But after the Triassic period comes to an end and the Jurassic begins, every turtle after that has a pretty complete shell with a plastron and a carapace, features that we see continue to this day. The VMNH actually has hundreds of specimens of fossil turtles, most of them from the Cretaceous period of Montana in the western United States. These are turtles from the Hell Creek Formation that lived alongside classics like Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex. In a lot of cases, the turtle pieces you find are just isolated bits of shell like these. You know, nicely textured and sculptured bones from different parts of the shell and many different species of turtle as well. This long and flat shell chunk that you see here is called a costal. It's one of those elements that's derived from the ribs. It actually has complex suture surfaces on both sides so that it can fuse solidly to the next costal in front and the one behind it. Some of these Cretaceous turtles reached incredible sizes. This is a piece of the plastron from a turtle called Adocus. It's almost an inch thick. Adocus was one of the bigger turtles on land during the Cretaceous period, reaching lengths of over two and a half feet. Cretaceous period ends and the age of dinosaurs end. Most of the dinosaurs go out. But a lot of turtle species survived and thrived after the extinction, such that we have over 300 species living with us on Earth today. This video is part of the Virtual Reptile Festival for 2020, beginning Friday, June 12th, and continuing into Saturday, June 13th. On the 13th, for those near Martinsville, you can also attend the drive through Reptile Experience at the VMNH parking lot from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., drive through an outdoor exhibition of some of our finest reptilian specimens, modern and fossil. With that, I'm Adam Pritchard, and I'll return with more tales of ancient life.